This is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. Peace, everybody. Welcome to Bud Browns with LLC. And I have a brief presentation for you. And it will deal with steer decisis. Uh, also deal with precedence, which is pretty much the same thing, steer decisis and precedence. Um, I'm also going to try to touch on primary authority, persuasive authority, and mandatory. <clears throat> No, I'm sorry, secondary. Secondary authority, persuasive authority, and primary authority. Um, the reason for this is I help quite a few people with their cases and their paperwork. And I more or less like to have people do their own thing and put their stuff together, you know, reference different sources, um, look up particular cases, excuse me, um, similar cases, and see what other people have done, and you try to mimic their steps. And a lot of the time, you're going to get success from that, which falls under precedence, precedence is state decisis. As a court ruled in the past, it must rule in the future. Um, if you have a case that is very similar to cases that have been decided in favor of, uh, let's say, a defendant was caught allegedly with um, marijuana. And your case is pretty much similar, very, very similar to that case. And that person got off or that person's case was dismissed. You can use that case and your paperwork and make the um, the court take judicial the judicial notice of it, and that's how they must rule. Now, there's uh, different levels to this that you got to be aware of. When you, it has to do with primary authority, secondary authority, and persuasive authority. Primary authority has to deal directly. Let's say if it's a statute, if a statute or a code. And as the code reads, is how it should be applied. If the code reads that um, no U.S. citizens can, let's say, carry a firearm, then that's what the code says, and that's what the code has to reflect. However, if you go above that statute, that code, and that ordinance to what supersedes that, and that would be the Constitution, what does the Constitution say? The Constitution doesn't specify it has to be U.S. citizens. So, uh, and I'm sorry, let me share my screen so you can see where I'm going with this. Now, there's a case of VC versus Wilkins, which is right here. Um, the person did a constitutional challenge of North Carolina statutes with regards to only U.S. citizens can have a, or apply for and receive a concealed weapon. And the plaintiff in this motion, in this, um, in this case, won. Um, so if you are a state citizen and you're not a U.S. citizen, or if on your application you write down that you're not a U.S. citizen and they deny you, this can be used in your defense. Now, if your case is in New Jersey, but this case that we're mentioning here is in North Carolina, you still can use the case. Um, that would be persuasive, meaning it's up to the judge or the court to utilize this case as a reference in how they will judge or how they will, they will rule, but you'd have more of a better chance if it was a case that was decided in New Jersey, if you understand. So North Carolina cases for North Carolina, New Jersey cases for New Jersey. So primary would be if it came from that jurisdiction. Secondary would be it came from a secondary jurisdiction, if you understand. So you want mandatory primary. 
mandatory, or as I believe it's called mandatory authority, meaning the highest level of um, authority you want to use with the closest resemblance of your case. All right. Um, this is pretty um, technical if you don't really follow law or if you're, if you're a newbie to this. I'm speaking in Japanese to you right now. But if you've done a little bit of homework, you may know what I'm talking about. Now, in the paperwork that I'm helping people with, I've noticed people would cite cases in their paperwork, cases that they may have found in booklets somewhere, may have found online. And chances are, if you did not research that case and see if it's still a, a good resource, then you may lose on that point because it's no longer good. It was appealed or um, it was either overturned or was um, uh, appealed, repealed. You know, it's not, it's not a good case anymore. So you want to make sure that the cases that you are using in your paperwork is good. How do you do that? Um, my first line of defense is Google Scholar. Let me show you Google Scholar. And you should use this, not just regular Google. Google Scholar, and you will go to case law. Click that button. Now, is it federal courts? It's in Jersey courts. You can actually select your jurisdiction. If you're in New York, <clears throat> do you look for, are you looking for the appellate? Court of Appeals, what are you looking for? Uh, Florida, Appeals, Supreme Court. You know, this is what you would do. Now, I'm going to close this and just put in VC and see what comes up. Versus Williams, right here. Employment security, no. That's not the case. That's VC Williams. No, not Williams, Wilkerson. Sorry. Wilkins. It was Wilkins. Okay, you know what? Let's go back because I'm sorry I did that wrong. You need to select the courts. Clear. This was a North Carolina case. Let's go to North Carolina. Just narrow it down to their jurisdiction. We're clear. We don't need the federals. We're done. Now, when you search, every case that is related to that area should come up. And VC Workers Wilkinson is not coming up. Uh, I'm going to try another search engine. It's Wilkins. And it's right here. Okay. Court listener. Remember these um, URLs, these websites. Please use them. Okay. We're in court listener, VC versus Wilkins. And this is the entire case. The docket information. This is um, PDFs that uh, um, the motions and the filings that they put into the case. Some of it is free. Some of it you have to buy. And to tell if this is a good case, it's still good. You would go all the way down to the bottom and see if it was repealed, if it was um, uh, um, I forgot the word to use. It come to me. A minute, I'm sorry, but. Corrected judgment, attorney fees, it is so ordered, judge decree, a motion, uh, fees is granted for the plaintiff in 92000 an additional $3,000. So they filed an injunction, they won, and they got awarded this amount of money for violation of their rights. Okay? So let me try to explain it once again. You want primary authority at all costs. Primary authority. Look these words up. Primary authority, secondary authority, authority, 
And um, wait, mandatory is secondary authority or oh, persuasive, persuasive authority. Please look these words up. Also look up stare decisis and precedent. I'll put these words in the um, the bottom of the uh, the video. I'm not going to give you the definitions. I need you to do that. Please look this stuff up and get familiar with it. Now, private individuals really do not mess with uh, statutes, codes, ordinances, and things of that nature because they don't really go into court unless someone was injured, someone was frauded, or someone was killed. Then you would have to go into court and you would need to either defend or prosecute, what have you. So as someone that is not a private citizen or someone that feels the need to go into court, these are the things that you need to know. You need to know and understand what is going on in the court. You need to know the procedures because a lot of these cases or a lot of us are losing in procedure. Our paperwork is tight and um, our arguments is tight, but the procedure isn't being followed. And if you're not getting on a record, it's not going to be successful. So you, you got to understand, you got to remember, you got to learn principles and the rules of procedure. Um, I'm going to do a video on the um, federal rules of civil procedure and break that down and show you some things in that uh, manual that you need to know. But this one, this, this video was about stare decisis, precedence, also primary authority, secondary authority, and um, um, I keep doing it. <laughs> secondary, persuasive, persuasive, persuasive. All right, so don't just throw case law into your documentation and run with it without first checking to make sure it's still a valid case that can be used. All right. So if this is not clear, please leave me some feedback. Let me know what you need clarity with. If I need to better under, uh, better uh, articulate the message. Uh, maybe you didn't understand anything I said. Maybe you understood a little bit. Let me know so I can uh, clarify because I, I really need this to be interactive because this is the only way you're going to learn. And if you don't know, you won't know. And if you don't know, you may lose. So please, please, please leave me some feedback. And while you're at it, click like. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe so you can get notifications and when the next video is being dropped and place a comment. So click like. Leave a comment and please, please, please share, share this video. This is Bud Browns LLC signing off. I thank you for your time. I hope this was um, a little bit of information that was valuable to you that may help you win your cases. You know, utilize a case that was already won. As a matter of fact, Tresvent versus, I'm going to put it in the, um, the comments below. The city of Tampa had to pay a motorist that was held. Um, it was unlawful imprisonment. I think there was a ruling. And they paid him a hefty amount of money because the police held him and questioned him. Um, you know, it, I'll show you the, the, um, the link in the description. But again, that is a good case. That is a very good case. And you can use that today. So if the police pull you over, hold you longer than five minutes or whatever. You can get paid, I think they gave 90 something thousand per minute, and that's an exaggeration, but this this guy really got off, Trez Van versus, um, I think, the city of Tampa. So I put that in there. Now, all the, remember, all of the cases that were successful and they match your case, use them. The more you, the more cases that you have in your, um, in your paperwork on your side, pointing to why you should win will help you win. Don't forget to bring more than one witness to court. Try to get your own stenographer, yada, 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 yada. Thank you again. Like, share, comment. Thank you. Peace. Goodbye. I'm Brownsville, LLC.